All right, geeks, Unite the Clans here, back in your life with more Minecraft. Finally, apologies, it took me a little longer than I thought to get this video to you. If you don't know what it is, I mean, you should have read the title before you clicked on the video. But this is our second in a series of five seed spotlights. A few weeks ago, I brought you my episode zero. In it, I showed off five epic beautiful, mind-boggling seeds, some of the best I've ever seen from Minecraft. Uh, and I gave you guys the opportunity to help me decide where to do a Let's Play series. But my channel's brand new, and it's going to take a little time to accrue enough votes for it to actually be a reflection of what the best seed is. Uh, the channel's slowly growing. Uh, we've got new subscribers, new views. Uh, new votes on the poll, including one uh, for this spot. This is Mount Shambay. Uh, I think as it stands now, there's a three-way tie in the poll. Shambay, Nordragar, and Ocean's Gate, which I'll probably be bringing you in a couple uh, more weeks. Uh, but for today, let's take a closer look at Mount Shambay. We're going to do the same thing we did for the archipelago. Uh, I messed around for an hour and put together a bit of a creative build. For you guys. Uh, didn't go too elaborate. Um, what you're probably trying to figure out now is what I did. Uh, when we showed off Mount Shambay the first time, we really looked. It's a tremendously beautiful seed. There is a mountain uh, in the direction that my Minecraft character there is currently looking in uh, that will blow your mind. If you haven't seen that, go back to episode zero uh, and watch. It's not going to be a huge feature of today. Mount Shambay had another uh, Another cool feature. It had a village right at spawn, and something I've never done in all my time playing Minecraft is to completely renovate a village. I've seen it done a bunch of times, where you knock out all the existing blah vanilla buildings, build some epic ones of your own, and have the villagers or the testificates move in there. Um, it's something I have wanted to do for a long time, and you know what? If we play here, maybe we will. Now, like I said, I did a short creative build. I messed around for a little over an hour. Uh, I didn't have time to redo a whole village in that time, which is why you see me still standing on uh, the existing church. And you can see some of the other buildings in the background, blacksmith down there, fields and houses uh, and the well. What I've done is gone together and put a couple quick buildings together uh, as well as a well, just to give you a taste of what it would look like if we renovated this whole thing. Now, before I show you, I wanted to say, you know, the style of the build, I was thinking maybe something Stone Age or trying to do some African or, or maybe ancient Egyptian style looking buildings. And then the more I looked at those acacia trees, the more I thought, bonsai. And I thought, let's do something Japanese. It's a hard style to do in Minecraft, some medieval or feudal Japanese buildings. But that's what we went with. So without further ado, let's have a look at my creations. Ready? All right, so there's the well, and we got two buildings. Check them out. Let me squat to get out your way. Uh, looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, the one on the left there uh, was my first attempt. Uh, I hadn't planned on finishing it, and then I realized how close to being done it was. I don't love it. Uh, the well was also a challenge. Uh, I'll talk about all these in just a sec, um, but uh, the building in the back, I, I'm pretty happy with. Uh, so let's, uh, give me a sec guys, and I'm gonna get down to ground level. So guys, let's start off with the well. Uh, I googled a uh, Japanese well, and I came across a, uh, an example that was definitively Japanese. I looked at it and thought, yes, that's exactly what I need to build problem with that and the problem with this whole uh, attempting an ancient Japanese style is it doesn't scale right uh, you can see how gigantic the superstructure of this well is uh, but that's the only way I could really capture the look of it uh, we've got the water source in the middle uh, if I could have somehow made this smaller and changed the whole footprint of the building I would have but I couldn't find a way uh, to make that happen without simply having like just a hole. Uh, and so up here we've got these cross beams. Uh, we went with nether brick. 
I got that inspiration from a Japanese style build I saw, I think, years ago now uh, on the uh, inspiration series that Corrales and B00 uh, did together. Uh, if you don't know them, they're some of the best Minecraft YouTubers. Um, definitely worth watching. I think for B Dubs, it was Inspirations number 11. I'm not sure if it was the same number for Corrales, but just Google Corrales Inspirations Japanese. You'll get that temple. Uh, which used a lot of nether brick. Yes, they were looking at it through a texture pack, um, which gave it a different look, but I think, honestly, it still works in vanilla. Uh, if we peek past the well, which I've kept really simple, I won't spend too much time on that, to the building I'm most proud of, I think that, that works, that kind of maroon color. Um, but before we get on to the big building, let's uh, roll over to the smaller one. Uh, it's a challenge, too, to uh, uh, get these upturned corners that are... Uh, typical of traditional Asian architecture. Um, I use kind of the same technique here, slightly, slightly varied uh, from what I used on uh, this side. I added the poles, uh, which I think works. And then, uh, like I said, it's hard to scale. This is about as small as I could manage a single building. Uh, I had to add this whole second level because it didn't feel right without it. Uh, and I had to add this kind of trellis uh, of, of birch uh, fence posts down here. Um, I went with, uh, on this build, I went with, uh, I think, dark oak. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's got to be. I went with dark oak for the vertical supports, and I went with white wool uh, for the walls to mimic that rice paper texture. Um, you'll see more of that inside. Over here, we went with spruce planks, and we went with snow, um, and uh, accents of red, uh, on this one, with a little bit of that, that birch. On this one, we have the, the dark green of the birch leaves, light green of the uh, sugarcane reeds, whatever they're called. Um, and uh, and we have some of that, that maroon. I think it really works. Um, but bef before I get on to my favorite building, I'll give you a quick peek at this one. I kept the interior really small. Um, I wanted to attempt to mimic the rice paper uh, wall effect. Um, and... I tried a couple different things. With this one, I went with these birch doors um, instead. Uh, and I think they look pretty good. I mean, you can't really put them in both corners, so it doesn't quite work, but um, we got a little peek at it. And if we roll around to the outside of this building, you'll see I added lanterns hanging from the uh, arched corners of the second level. And I attempted to give the roof a bit of like a, a dramatic uh, you know, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a steady climb up. It should kind of be flat and then peak up quickly, uh, like that. So I tried to give that impression wow, with the roof. Uh, these are just, uh, I mean, you've seen this trick before: glowstone with uh, the hatches on it, and I went with more of the nether rack there. Uh, added a little bit of decoration on the outside here, more of the birch leaves, and I always do those on top of some wood. I went with more dark oak there. Um, cute little blue flowers. I'm going to hate when I re-listen to that part, the way that it's just a cute little blue flowers that make it cut out. Uh, and then we've got the rose bushes here. Uh, I was trying to match some of the red that I incorporated in the build here. Um, and then as it gets dark, guys, let's take a look. Let's shelter in the warmth of this building over here. Uh, before we do, we'll have a little look at the style. I mentioned the, uh, the style of that temple build from Corrales and B-Dub's video from a couple years ago. I definitely took some inspiration from that. I'm not a genius builder. I don't come up with new ways uh, to do things all the time. Uh, and the whole point of that series was to inspire you. So I uh, definitely stole a few touches from that building style, stole a few more uh, from elsewhere on the internet, and then hopefully added in a bit of my own flavor. But um, uh, we went with uh, uh, a lot of spruce wood and a lot of the snow. Uh, used some of these these kind of stone pavers, half slabs there, um, and uh, yeah, more birch leaves, more nether rack, a little cobble, and then up top, um, spruce and dark oak wood. We've got some light shining through here. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this building turned out. I think it looks pretty freaking great on the outside, and then the inside, I'm pretty happy with. The idea was to give this sort of a communal kitchen feel. Um, so I went with the open entrance, which I'm sure will be fun for skeletons. Oh, the problem of not having a cursor. Uh, I didn't want that to get in the way. But uh, so here, to imitate the rice paper walls, I've gone with uh, 
uh, the hatches, the trap doors. Now, you run into the same problem here where they can't meet in a corner. So what I've done here, I don't know, I'm going to need my cursor for this. I've just hidden a water source block right there. Uh, and then planted some uh, some reeds, some cane, uh, in the sand, in the corners. And I think it honestly gives it a nice feel. I've got them at different heights. Um, and you can see the interior, a lot of the same stuff. More cobble, uh, more uh, stone, uh, it's called stone brick. And then uh, a little bit of iron bars here. Uh, anytime you're trying to build a fireplace, guys, I think it's three by three. Uh, you cannot have wood anywhere within a three by three. Like that piece there definitely couldn't be wood, nor could uh, anything above it. At some point, you can switch over to wood, but I haven't burned this place down yet, and I've been messing around in here for a while. Uh, so we went with this big communal fireplace. There wasn't much room to add any other kind of decorations. Uh, so what I did is I added some up here. Uh, messed a little bit with the shape of my furnace and the chimney to get a, uh, a decent ladder up to this loft. And we'll see if I can manage. Let's turn you back off view and then there we go so here's the loft you can see some cool cobwebs we've added a lot of neat lighting in here with some glowstone hidden by trap doors uh, I carried the chimney up originally I wasn't going to do that because I was worried it would feel too claustrophobic but uh, it actually turned out okay uh, so this is a neat little loft we got bookcases we went with uh, I think these are the spruce doors here uh, for more uh, decorative wall effect if you haven't done this before guys just throw in a door where there's nothing to go through it's a, definitely a neat way to decorate. You saw it, me attempting to do that in the other house. Uh, we got some bookcases here. We got a couple of little uh, crafting tables. And then I hid a um, furnace just behind this entry hatch here. So you've got everything you need up here, including a bed. Uh, we might as well crash till morning. Oh, that bugged out a little bit. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's get down here, guys, and I'll give you one last view of this. Uh, I'm going to try and keep these seed spotlights short. Uh, it's a bit of a weird trade-off. I spend a good couple hours screwing around with these and then, you know, more time after I record editing and rendering and uploading them. Uh, so to only get a kind of 10 or 15 minute video out of it is a little lame, but whatever. We're going to do our best to finish up uh, these seed spotlights we can get down to the Let's Play. So that's it, guys my Japanese village, uh, and I've built it uh, at Mount Chambe. Uh, three little structures, gives you a taste of what a village might be like. Honestly, if I was doing more, I'd match as much as I could to that style. I think that looks really good. The combination of the, the burgundy from the netherrack and those uh, blue-green birch leaves uh, with the spruce wood and the snow, honestly, I'm really happy with the way that looks. These two buildings, eh, what are you gonna do? But uh, no, I'm definitely happy with it. So guys, uh, this is uh, Unite the Clans uh, showing off my uh, Japanese village build uh, for Seed Spotlight. If you haven't voted, there are a few votes. Uh, and I'm going to leave that poll open until I finish all five of the Seed Spotlights. Archipelago down. Mount Chambe, if you're watching it now, it's pretty much done. Then we'll bring you the Bluffs, we'll bring you Ocean's Gate, and we'll finish it all off with my personal fave. Nordragar. Uh, so it's going to take me probably a few more weeks. I'll try and do these weekly, but uh, like I said, they are a bit draining. I'm trying to figure out a creative build, make it look decent enough, and then have enough content after finishing that build to make like a 15 minute video. So uh, it, they may come out every couple of weeks, but we will get there, guys. I cannot wait uh, to get that far. Um, actually, while I talk, because I do have a little more I want to talk about, let's head out towards Mount Chambe. Uh, give you more incentive to vote for this one. Uh, yeah, guys, the poll is going to stay open. Uh, I'm stoked to get to a Let's Play. I teased in my latest episode of my vlog, Drinking by Myself, that I'm dying to potentially do some daily Minecraft. It's going to take us a few weeks, but once we get through these seed spotlights, that's all I want to do. Hold on a sec, guys. Reminder popping up on my iPhone that I'm using to record my face. Uh, so there's Mount Chambe itself. It's glorious and epic. Uh, and I haven't built anything over here yet, but I've got a hundred ideas for things to build. Um, yeah, I almost, almost built over here for sure. I mean, you guys can see, uh, whether you're going to vote or not in my poll, please do, uh, 
I've got it up on my Google Plus page, and I'll throw a link in the video description so you guys can get to the poll. Whether or not you're going to vote, this is definitely worth looking at. I'll actually throw the seed up on the screen at this point. It's also going to be in the description. Um, and um, this is worth looking at just in case you need a new place to play because this is one of the most truly beautiful seeds I have ever come across. Like, look at this thing. Uh, I'm not attempting to rehash too much of what we already looked at back uh, in episode zero, but man, this is so freaking gorgeous. I mean, look at this. So that's it. Guys, I'm your Night the Plans, saying goodbye from the picturesque, epic, gorgeous Mount Chambay. We didn't look at all that much of this uh, part of the seed uh, in the seed spotlight. We focused a lot more on the village and my creative build there. But if you haven't seen it, go watch episode zero. You'll get a really full tour of this spot. I would so be down to play here. So if you haven't voted in the poll, do that. Just a uh, link in the video description. It's on my Google Plus page now. Let me know where you want to see me play. Uh, and if I haven't done a seed spotlight of your favorite yet, just hang on because it's coming. Next, in a week or two, I'm going to hit you up with the bluffs. I'm thinking maybe building a boat there, but I don't know. If you have an idea of what I should do for the creative build, let me know uh, in the comments of this video. But for now, guys, I'm in at the plans. Signing off, and I will see y'all in the next episode.